Welcome to Everything Money. We are so happy you clicked on this video. Uh, I know the thumbnail pulled you right in, baby, because Paul, those thumbnails are insane. We are looking at Snowflake today, Paul. Uh, right off the bat, you say um, there's not a lot of data and history behind this company. Although whenever we talk about Warren Buffett, typically avoiding new IPO stocks, Mo, mm -hmm. um, the hype train always tells us, but he owns Snowflake. <laughs> so we thought we'd give it a once over, use our initial screening process, say, where are we with this stock? What do we think? And if you're watching other videos that are just telling you to just go for it because this thing's incredible, maybe to pump the brakes a bit, we'll take a look. We'll look at the financials. And we also have Trader Mo's, Trader Mo's see if they are trading Snowflake in our Bidness Nation, the trading group we have in our Discord chat. Paul, Snowflake enables data storage processing, analytical solutions. Uh, it has not been around a long time, but uh, we've had a lot of our uh, other YouTubers say how wonderful this is going to be. And as you know, on this channel, as value investors, we don't really think about uh, the hopes and wishes of the future. We'd like to invest in great companies now at a cheaper price. So give us your thoughts on a company like Snowflake and why Buffett owns it currently. So I don't know if Buffett himself bought it. I don't, I'd have to look into that. I haven't yeah. researched that. But remember, there are many people who work at, at Berkshire that he trusts to manage money and they might own some of it. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing. I am surprised to hear that Buffett, that Berkshire Hathaway owns it. But again, the great thing about investing is it's an art. People have different reasons for buying different stocks. Now, for our software, we don't have the eight pillars here because we don't have enough data. Our software needs five years of data in order to compute the eight pillars. So that's all the more important why you have to learn a process here from us to go look at this. So I'm looking at this company as a $90 billion company. Revenue of 850 million. So this is a software, this is a data company. First thing is the price to sales ratio. You're taking the market cap, dividing by the revenue, it's 105. Just to let you know, what's Apple at? Seven or eight? Microsoft's at six or seven or eight. It's very low numbers. This automatically screams expensive. Does that mean it is? Oh, if, if you told me tomorrow, revenue is gonna go up by three, like 3,000% 3, tomorrow. Okay, great. It's now two or three to one. Makes a lot of sense. Remember, every investment is the present value of all future cash flows. So my goal here is to say, okay, let me look at Snowflake. We're gonna go in our stock analyzer tool at some point, input a lot of assumptions about revenue growth, profit levels, share, share change, and say, is it something that might make sense today? We don't know the future. And the problem is we don't have enough track record of the past to really understand what's going on. But this company is likely to grow very fast from here on out. But the question becomes, are you willing to pay $90 billion for a company that has 850 million in revenue and lost 760 million? And you might sit there and say, yeah, but it's growing like crazy. Awesome, it is growing like crazy. But if you believe that if it's growing like crazy, that justifies paying whatever price, that's what you're saying by saying it's growing like crazy. Because look guys, we have no PE, why? Because there's no earnings. We have no profit margin because no earnings. We have no free cash flow. Last year's free cash flow was negative. We have a negative return on invested capital, negative return on equity. All these negatives already piling up make me go, hang on a second. Okay, so I look at the income statement. I'm gonna do quarterly data here. And I'm gonna go back one, two, three, four, five quarters. 133 million to 272 million. That's doubling in a matter of two years. Okay, that's impressive. I like that. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. But look at this net income number. Their, their net income has over doubled in terms of loss. Their, their, their loss has doubled, over doubled. Again, it's growing, so I understand that. But remember, when a company is losing money, they either have to take on debt or take on equity in order to, to, to fund that, that debt, right? How do you take on equity as a company? Issue more shares. Issue more shares. So let's go to the bottom. Before you get that, Paul, when you say yeah. losing money, couldn't they just be spending more than they have to isn't add that, Isn't that what losing money is? Well, I guess that's not always the same. Is that always the same mindset? I'm losing. Tell me, I mean, I guess losing sounds really bad, but advertising sounds really good. I'm not denying that what you're saying is, Paul, like we've had businesses where we spend, we have, if we just stopped advertising, it'd be profitable, but we spend more to advertise. Oh yeah, and then you do say, well, I'm currently losing money, so. Right, I okay, guess you're but right. it's still losing money. You're right. Right, now, does, does that mean it's a, it's still a viable business idea to sit there and say, we're going to lose money in order to grow. I'm all in favor of that. But it doesn't mean you as an investor have to overpay for that. Or sugarcoat it and call it advertising. It's always advertising. There's yeah, always but, advertising involved. Yeah. I mean, look at these shares outstanding. I, I don't even understand these numbers, to be honest with you. 278 down to 166, but 297. 
I don't even get this, 238 million shares. It's all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at the balance sheet. Are they taking on more debt? They tend to, no, they don't have much debt at all. They only have a billion dollars in debt. So from a financial standpoint, they've got a, they've got a very good balance sheet. They're probably going to survive because they're going to issue more shares instead of taking on debt. They have a great balance sheet. I love that. They have plenty of cash on hand to pay off all their liabilities. Okay, cash flow statement. Let's go quarterly. YOLO. Negative, 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 positive, positive, negative. Eh, it's just not great. So I guess the stock's at $302 a share. We're going to go to the stock analyzer tool once Mo's done. I don't know if they're trading Snowflake that much, but once Mo's done, we'll go to the stock analyzer tool. I will make assumptions based on revenue, profit margin, things that we don't even see right now. I'm just going to throw out numbers and say, where does this fall currently? Are we in a ballpark of, oh, this makes sense or this doesn't make sense, okay? Yeah, because I see comments, Paul. People just say, well, they'll look at a stock, what is it, Snowflakes at 302, and they just blindly say, oh, like, it's growing like crazy. I should buy it. Any, okay, great. Yeah, and I, I'm and I, buying anything under 250. I'm and buying and It's like, why is that? For those, I would sit there and say Intel and Cisco in 2000 were tripled in size today versus 2000. Their stock is still down. down yeah. Their revenue and profit have tripled since 2000 and their, reven- and, and their current stock price is still lower than it was in 2000. So growth isn't everything. If you overpay for growth, you'll still get hurt in the long run. Yeah, they're saying in this article that um, like Google, Snowflake software will get more powerful with more users, uploading more data and analytics. That is true with Google. I mean, That's it's very possible. It's crazy. And, uh, and Geico is an early adopter of Snowflake. And so this all ties into Warren Buffett, maybe why he is in love with this. And maybe he gets rid of it soon if it's not doing what he wants. So Mo, are people trading this in the Midnight Nation? If you want to trade this at a quicker pace, you can jump over to Mo in the Midnight Nation and see what's going on over there with that chart. Yeah, this one a lot of people trade. So their high, I want to note, was $429. So that just shows how much room there is to run to the top side if you do believe that this thing can get back to those levels. Now, I would prefer to trade this one from um, a daily perspective, not so much of a long-term perspective, just because you do have that volatility. I mean, you can see the inconsistencies in volume. I mean, it does have those big spike days. I have to believe that this is some sort of hype stock every once in a while, right? Yes, it is for sure. So, to, so with that, I would rather just be able to catch these little um, blips up over a couple day period and just grab some nice engulfing candlesticks, take profits going into moving averages, etc. Like this, you had a really great run up here. You, I mean, just just keep following your stochastics on a daily chart and swing trade this because this is going to be a lot more beneficial to you than having to ride these massive ups and downs for literally no reason. You can do this in a couple of days and be in and out of it and not give yourself a heart attack for um, something that is I consider to be probably hype. The good thing is, though, we finally have a year of a chart because they went public on September 17th of 2020. So you have a year. If you want to trade it long term, have fun. Use stops, though, because it's very important that you use stops. Paul, you got the stock analyzer tool behind you. I, I do. And one of the things, so guys, I don't know what this company is going to grow like. In two years, it doubled. I, revenue. So I'm putting 30, 35, and 40% revenue growth. I'm putting share change at four, three, and two. Profit margin, 10, 15, 20. Same with free cash flow margin. PE, by the way, I don't believe these PEs are going to be the case, but I know everybody's going to give me flack about that one. So I put that in there. Hit the analyze button. The stock's currently at 302. Analyze. Look at this. It's showing me $38 the mid. If I want to get 10% return, $92 is the high. $38? Yeah, 38 bucks. That's what I'm sitting there saying. Now, let me oh go boy. change some assumptions. Let's assume they grow. Now, by the way, that's for, fi- that's for seven years. Oh Let's boy. assume they grow 40, 50, and 60% revenue growth for seven years. It's still overpriced. It's still, if you want to, be, if you want to match the market, $230 a share. It's still overpriced. That's the benefit of the stock analyzer tool. It's not just to say, pay this. It's to sit there and say, let me change my assumptions and see how obvious this is as a buy or obvious is it a void. And to, to me, this is an obvious avoid because 60% revenue growth for the next seven years would be equivalent, would take this, the, the, the revenue to $23 trillion, billion. Is that possible? Of course it's possible. Is it probable? I don't know. It's been around for, 12, for nine years already. Is it possible it becomes $23 billion? Yeah, maybe so. And if it does, it could justify the price at two thirty. That's a lot to happen, guys. Seven years. When was the last time you thought of something seven years from now and you played it out and it went perfectly according to plan? All I'm asking you to do is be more cautious and say, "Hey, I need to spend more time being observant of what I'm, what assumptions I'm making." That's all I'm sitting there saying. 
Yeah, in the end, Berkshire, their their equity is 2, 2.2%. You know, Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett are very big on, I want to be able to see the future that I can see. You know what I mean? And that's not this pick of theirs. Yeah. So who knows? I just look at it saying, I'm going to avoid it. I'm going to wait for them to become a stable, established business with an exact plan on how they're going to handle their finances and then go from there. To me, I'm not, I have no FOMO. I don't worry about losing out in the stock. That I was could just going to say, thousand. yeah, if, in the comments below, we might be saying we're old FUDs, we're missing out, but we have our style. And if you- I'm 40 and most birthday is today. Oh, he's 33. Oh my gosh, look at that. So we're not really old FUDs. But, you look uh, older than all of us. I do, you're I do. I look like Santa. But um, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> like, you know, we, we like our style, you know, and we can sleep easy at night knowing that we don't have to go up and down on these wild rides of these companies. We like to find yep. a great company at a cheap price. So- We'll keep you updated on Snowflake and uh, yeah. Join. And we didn't really ever, we didn't really show the software here, but our software is incredible. You see it right here. Click the link below. You get a lot of stuff with it. Um, just to show you what you get. Pause the screen. This is only 84 cents a day. You get all this stuff. Guys, it's incredible. I'm not going to go watch another video of ours where I explain it in full detail. But uh, if you're really serious, really serious about financial future, you need to go get the software. Mo has a comment. Uh, follow us on Instagram. And oh, yes. it's widely Instagram. speculated that Lieutenants Todd Combs and Ted Weschler operated the Snowflake See, Todd Combs, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Follow yeah. us on Instagram. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching the video. Follow the thumbs up on the way out. See you next one. Bye.